Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to the channel. If you have clicked on this video, you have probably clicked on it because you have been watching guitarists for a long time fly around on the fretboard from one end to the other covering a hell of a lot of ground over a backing track, a riff, maybe they're improvising and you are wanting to do the same and wondering how they do it. Your mind is probably boggled with music theory, you don't understand it and every time you try and learn any music theory it all just goes completely over your head. If that's you and you've clicked on this video then you are in the right place. It doesn't matter if you are a beginner or if you have been playing a long time because I didn't actually know properly how to cover the full fretboard for a good 15 years of my playing life you know I, I played and struggled around for 15 years not knowing really where or how to move around the fretboard over riffs or chords and I put a lot of effort into trying to find out how to do this and when I realized how to do it and the penny dropped I was frustrated and annoyed that I'd wasted so much time not knowing. The good news is that today in this video I'm going to show you exactly how I learned to move around on the fretboard, write riffs and then write melodies, solos over the top of them and manage to stay in key and also improvise over riffs and move around wherever I want to. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's going to be quite a long video so go pause the video get a cup of tea, cup of coffee, a beer, whatever, go into a quiet place, it's not going to be complicated and when you've got to the end of this video, I'm hoping that it will be like someone has turned a light on in your head and you will understand everything easily and then the whole fretboard will be unlocked for you to travel around wherever you want, in whatever key you want over whatever riff you want. That's the aim of the video, so go get your cup of tea now, go to a quiet place, and we're gonna talk about exactly how you can move all over the fretboard from the first fret right to the 24th fret, if you have 24 frets. Right, so first of all, I'm just gonna talk about how I used to do this, how I used to write solos, licks, little melodies over riffs before I knew properly where, when, how, I could move around on the fretboard wherever I wanted. So what I used to do was I would record a riff, you know, no drums, anything like that. Probably just on a phone, you know, I'd press the voice recording and I'd play a riff or back in the day it used to be obviously a tape because I'm that old and I would play that riff in the background for probably a good 60 seconds, you know, maybe sometimes two minutes if it was something really tricky. And then what I would do is I'd have my guitar on and I would find notes around the fretboard. I usually start probably on, on the bottom, uh, when I refer to the bottom strings, I refer to tonally, the bottom strings, the low strings, you know. Um, I would move around on these strings till I found a note that sounded nice over the riff that I was aiming to write over. And when I'd find that note, I would usually find a cluster of notes that would probably span uh, three or four strings and that's how I would write melodies, solos, things like that. Now that's all very well but it's, it worked for me for years but it's a very slow way of doing it, it's a very hard way of doing it, it's a very long way of doing it and also you're relying on your ears and if you're a beginner your ear, your musical ear might not be that great yet. Now one thing I will say is that when you find a little flurry of notes here, or when I used to, should I say, um, I would create a lick there, and then I would find another position somewhere. It could be miles away up here, and I'd find a lick there, and then a lick there, and I'd jump around, but I wouldn't really be able to cover the full board wherever I wanted. Now, once I learned the right way to do this, uh, to cover the full board over a backing track, a riff, chords, whatever, I realized that what I had actually been doing without knowing for many years is finding the root note of the riff or the chord or an octave and that's how I was actually playing, just moving around on octaves or different notes that were in the riff and that's why they fitted and sounded nice and that's how I got away with it for years. However, there is some music theory that unlocks the full fretboard 
and by the end of this video you will be able to cover from one end of the fretboard to the other. Let's get on with it, let's get straight into it. First of all we need to mention something called the diatonic scale. Okay, now I'm going to try and not use too many big words, complicated words, things that might put, put you off and make you stop watching the video. I'm going to try and explain to you as simple as I can but it's unavoidable to, to, to use some of these words. So there is a scale called the diatonic scale okay, and it covers the fretboard basically from the nut here, all your open notes, and it goes right to the 12th fret here. Now some of you will already know that the 12th fret and the notes on there are the same notes that are the open notes on your guitar where the nut is and what we need to point out at this time in the video is that if you actually look at your fret markers I know my Jackson has a, a shark fin marker there on the first fret and some guitars do but if you actually look on say like a Strat, Gibson, uh, Les Paul, something like that you will notice that there is the nut, there is two blank frets and then there is the third fret with a marker. If you look at the 12th fret, imagine that's your nut, there are two frets with no marker and then there is a fret with a marker exactly the same as this part here and it follows all the way down in the same pattern. There is a reason that this, these markers on the fretboard do that and that is because the diatonic scale which I've just mentioned runs from the nut to the 12th fret here and then it repeats itself from the 12th fret to the 24th fret. So basically what I'm saying is if you learn the diatonic scale that runs from the nut to the 12th fret then all you need to do is move that scale from the 12th fret to the 24th, you know, repeat it so that scale that belongs there between those frets, if you move that massive scale to there, then you have now covered the full fretboard using the diatonic scale. Now, I'm going to mention some other things now that some of you will have probably heard of, not all of you, but um, I, I think a lot of you will have heard of uh, scales <clears throat> that are referred to as modes. Okay, now what the modes are, are seven scales that make up the diatonic scale. Okay, I know these words may be a bit scary right now, but just stick with it because honestly it's very basic and I'm going to explain it in such a basic way that you will, a light will come on in your head and you will realise suddenly how you can play whatever you want to at the end of this video. <clears throat> so, you have the diatonic scale that we have just mentioned a few times. It runs from the nut to the 12th fret. I'm repeating myself in this video because I'm trying to drill it into you. I'm trying to talk slowly, I'm trying to talk clearly and I want you to understand it and not forget these things that I'm telling you. So if I repeat myself and it gets on your nerves, just bear with me because I'm doing it on purpose to drill it into your brain. So the diatonic scale runs from the nut to the 12th fret. Within that scale there, there are scales and they are called modes. They've all got fancy names that are actually Greek, I believe. Could be wrong, but I think they're Greek. And if you learn all those seven scales, they make up the diatonic scale and they all interlock with each other, a bit like Lego, to make the diatonic scale. And that is how players are playing here and you will see them fly from here all the way up to the 12th fret or even further because they will know where all those notes are. They'll be able to visualize them on the fretboard. When players say they are stuck in a, a block, you know, in a pattern and they, they, they seem like they can't escape it. What they mean by that is that they are um, stuck in one mode or one scale on the fretboard and they don't seem to be able to budge out of it. Now the beauty of the diatonic scale and all these modes that make up the diatonic scale is that where they join, you can make other scales up, other patterns, other sequences of your own. And for me, this is where a player becomes, creates his own style, his own sound and will find his own favourite parts on the fretboard that he enjoys, his own favourite patterns and probably will use different versions of those and repeat them quite a lot in solos and lead work and that is how players are defined, you know, 
it, it is about style of playing and vibratos and all that type of thing but also the way they use these modes and the diatonic scale and the positions that they use also define who they are for instance when you learn this diatonic scale which i will show you at the end of the video you will start realizing that some famous riffs licks melodies that you probably have already learned or tried to learn you will start going oh my god neil is right you know this sweet child of mine is part of the diatonic scale it's part of that pattern i can see which part it is and that's how guns and roses made you know sweet child of mine that famous intro <clears throat> um same with steve vile for the love of god and a lot of steve vile stuff um you will start learning things like that and you will see and visualize the diatonic scale being used in all those songs and you will think god why has this been such a secret all these years because i do i do feel like this is not talked about enough and i do feel like this is kind of a bit of a it's a bit of a secret and if a guitarist is trying to teach himself you know he has to go find this stuff out and like i said it took me 15 years or something like that and all that time was wasted um doing things the hard way and i couldn't express myself fully as a guitarist when i couldn't move wherever i wanted you know like some players can and stay in key don't get me wrong if i'm improvising now i will hit a bum one you know a bum note a stinker somewhere that is not in the right scale we all do that or a bend won't go high enough something like that we all do it you know nobody's perfect but this is a good way of learning to travel around the fretboard and like i say you will see this patterns in all kinds of songs so the easiest way to learn this now for you guys is that every week if i were you no matter really what level guitar player you are you could be a super fast shredder and have absolutely no music theory whatsoever you could be really fast uh, or you could be beginner level and still be struggling picking and and making the guitar actually sound nice um but whatever level you are i would advise that you learn a mode every single week so that will take seven weeks and then on the eighth week start playing with these modes and joining them together and creating your own licks using say two or three modes uh, notes from two or three modes because you can slide around the board so you might be playing here on the g string and then you might just go right up to the 12th and then you might you might pick like a I couldn't reach that for this arm but you might pick up the 15th fret out and you can do that and as you could hear it's all in key you can hear or i can hear that that's all in key and the reason i can move between those notes is because i know that those notes are in the diatonic scale um, so it does work what we're going to do is i'm going to show you a mode and i'm going to write on the screen every time i show you a mode i'm going to write week one and i'm going to write underneath what the mode is that you are learning so please don't jump to try and learn two in one week it may be too much for you it may be overwhelming because we're trying to get muscle memory with these modes going and muscle memory can take some time especially for some players that are just starting out to actually kick in but the beauty as well of the diatonic scale and all these modes are that you can move them around so if you create a riff that say starts on a note that is not in the um part of any of the modes so let's pick one now uh say the fourth fret on the on the um the fourth fret on the the low e if a riff starts there you might think oh my god what am i going to do that that note is not in the uh, diatonic scale well what the diatonic scale can do is move so you can shift that pattern up or down in one lump um, that's not as easy to do things get quite complicated then for those guys that play in drop tuning like I do a lot metal players that play in different keys nothing much changes really um, providing your riff is using the notes in the diatonic scale nothing much changes because it is only a pattern at the end of the day it's a fingering pattern and um, when you drop your low E down really all you're doing is dropping it down a um you know a tone so all you do is you move the notes on that string and leave the others where they are 
that's uh, one way of doing it but like i say once you start learning the modes and you've got them on you've got the diatonic scale and you can move around wherever you want all these things what seemed hard for the first two or three months soon become very easy and like you will sit down and you will just start doing it automatically a bit like driving a car so when you get in your car you don't really think about going through the gears what gear you should be in you just know what to do and the guitar once you learn these modes it's kind of the same you will just sit down and start using notes that are in the diatonic scale and uh, that are part of these modes automatically in your playing without knowing and you just do it and it just becomes how you play obviously there are no rules in guitar playing especially in metal and rock rules are there to be broken and you can stray out of the diatonic scale and put extra what we call passing notes in that give it a more uh, minor feel to it major and minor we will cover that later on in another video if we need to but right now we're going to take a look at the diatonic scale again really quickly before we actually get into learning the the, the scales the diatonic scale runs from the nut to the 12th fret that scale can be repeated it's the same pattern and it can be repeated here uh, from the 12th fret to the 24th fret and that is how you can move around the fretboard using those notes providing the riff that you are playing over on the chords are also using a diatonic scale obviously but within that diatonic scale there are seven modes seven scales that interlock together a bit like lego and we will learn each one of those individually first and then what you'll be able to do is once you have the full diatonic scale pattern you'll be able to find your own scales within that scale because really all someone has done when they invented the modes you know Lydian and, and Aeolian and, and Dorian and all these modes all they have done is they have split up the diatonic scale into sections and you can do that and I would encourage you to do that on your own once you have the full pattern. Like I say, one a week. So keep coming back to this video. I'll take you through each scale. And let me know in the comments if any of this confuses you. I hope it doesn't. I know it's long-winded. But I really want to explain it and kind of drill it into you without kind of being patronising. Uh, this is the type of video, hopefully, that I'm, I'm putting together here that I wish was around when i was struggling to move around the fretboard you know um youtube wasn't even around at all then but i i really needed somebody to sit me down and explain this to me and nobody ever did once you get halfway through you will start to realize that all your skills interlock and when you get to the 12th fret you will be able to move around here and make up your own patterns and scales and licks using all those notes do not be afraid or ashamed like I used to be to have no you know music theory and and do not let it ever hold you back or hold your playing back so without further ado let's go okay guys welcome to week one so we are going to learn first of all the Lydian mode this mode starts on fret one we're going to do these modes in order and we're going to gradually move our way up to the 12th fret until we know them all on your low E which is not this that's your high e this is your low e and we are going to start on fret one then we are going to move to fret three then we are going to move to fret five then we are going to move up to the a string and we are going to start on fret two then it's fret three then it's fret five then we're going to move up to the D string, play fret 2, fret 3, and then fret 5. Then we are going to move up to the G string, and we are going to play fret 2, fret 4, and fret 5. Then we are going to move up to the B string, and we are going to play fret 1, fret 3 fret 5 then we are going to move up to the top E and we are going to play fret 1 fret 3 and fret 5 
Now, you can use whatever fingering you <laughs> want to do to move up and down the Lydian scale, like any scales, and you can um, also use slides if you want to. Don't think I have to play it like this rigid. You know, because it's quite boring, it's very scale-like, and I wouldn't encourage you ever to play a scale just as a scale. I don't think you benefit from it. You can use the same fingering that I have just there. Probably if you're gonna work on your speed, uh, alternate picket and everything, and see how fast you can get up and down it if you want. But I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend playing the scale how it feels to you, throwing some hammer-ons in, throwing some slides in, you know. You know, things like that. Play that for seven days and then we will move on to week two. Hi guys, I hope you got on well with the Lydium mode and I hope by now you at least are quite fluent at playing it and even if it's slowly, it doesn't matter as long as you are learning the actual notes. That's what's behind this. We're going to move on to week two now and week two is Mixolydian um, mode. And this is actually my favorite one and I use it too much, <laughs> in my opinion. When people talk about stuck in boxes like we've talked about quite a lot in this video, this is a box that I am in quite a lot. So we start on the third fret on the low E string. Then it's the fifth fret. Then it's the seventh fret. On the A string, we start on the third fret. Then it's the fifth fret. Then it's the seventh fret. On the D string, we then go to the third fret. Then it's the fifth fret. Then it's the seventh fret. On the G string, we then start on the fourth fret, the fifth fret, and the seventh fret. On the B string, we play the 3rd fret, the 5th fret, and then the 6th fret. On the top E string, it's the 3rd fret, followed by the 5th fret, and then the 7th fret. So, you should have this pattern then on the fretboard. If you do learn that quite quickly, like say within three or four days, which you might do depending on how um, advanced your, your, your finger style is, then um, you can start joining together week one, the Lydian, and week two, the Mixed Lydian, and try and find your own way around within it because now you already have the notes from the first fret all the way up to the seventh fret to play around with, or at least some of them. So that's already quite a big space there and actually looks like further than halfway. But don't forget these scales interlock with each other. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in week three. We are going to learn the Aeolian scale. Um, one thing I will say is if you can see behind me on the screen there, I actually have managed to find a really good diagram that shows you all these patterns that will be on the screen right at the end of the video it's a fantastic pattern and it's helped me because although i've known these scales years you know for a few years now and joined them all together because i found my own way around the whole pattern the pattern as a whole some notes in my memory are missing um so this is doing me as much good as you i've had to scrub up on um, a couple of areas of it for myself before I actually uh, showed you this because when you get used to using a diatonic scale you move around and you kind of forget basically you forget um, parts of some of the modes and which parts they belong to so we're going to do the Aeolian mode now um, this one starts on the fifth fret on the low E um, it then it uses the seventh fret on the low E then the eighth fret on the A string, it uses the 5th fret, 7th fret, 8th fret, 
on the D string it uses the 5th fret, 7th fret, 9th fret, on the G string 5th fret, 7th uh, fret, 9th fret, on the B string it uses the 5th fret, the 6th fret and the 8th fret. On the high E it uses the 5th fret, uh, the 7th fret and the 8th fret. And that should give you um, a scale that looks like this. Again, play around with those notes. I'll see you next week. Uh, this week we're going to look at the Locrian scale. I hope you're starting to find how these scales lock together now. Start with the 7th fret, 8th fret, 10th fret, A string, 7th fret, 8th fret, 10th fret, D string, 7th fret, 9th fret, 10th fret, G string, 7th fret, 9th fret, 10th fret, B string, 6th uh, fret, 8th fret, 10th fret, uh, high E string, 7th fret, <laughs> 8th fret and 10th fret so I hope you guys have got that scale we'll just play it through um, fully once once up for you guys so you know what it sounds like and uh, I'll see you all next week Hi guys, how are you doing? We are going to look at the Ionian scale, or the Ionian mode, should I say, this week. Um, this is a pretty straightforward one, actually. It goes like this in full. It's one of my favourites. Um, I forgot it was the Ionian, but I use it quite a lot. Or at least I use the top end of it a lot, and you will probably find yourselves also using the top end of it a lot if you are creating solos or melodies and things like that with it. So. Let's go. So the first note on the low E string is number eight, fret number eight here. Then we move to fret number 10 and then 12. A string, same pattern. It's eight, 10, 12. D string is nine, 10, 12. G string is 9, 10, 12, uh, B string is 10, 12, 13, and the E string is 10, 12, 13. So you should have... So you can do all kinds of things with that scale, it just feels nice and you will probably find your own favourite that flows easier than other ones. For me the Ionian, the Mixolydian and the Lydian are all scales that flow for me and fit in nicely with uh, what my fingers want to do. You'll probably find your own favourites too. Hi guys, how are you doing? We are now on week six for those of you that have been learning the modes on a weekly basis. Once again, I'll just recap the modes make up the diatonic scale. The modes are mini scales that lock together to make the diatonic scale and it runs from the note right up to the 12th fret. This segment here that you have learned has already reached the 12th fret as some of you have probably noticed that which I realized that last night and if you move that segment upwards now you have covered the full fretboard now do not forget that the nut here that has all the open strings on 
All these strings are part of the diatonic scale. The 12th fret here, which we have just reached last week, are all the same notes as the nut. So all you have to do now is throw in those 12th fret notes, which are the same as the nut. And you have completed that segment from the nut to the 12th fret there. Then you start again, so the first scales that we learnt here around the first fret, these were Lydian and Mixolydian and we can now add those in here and start again, start the whole process again and we will work our way right up to the 24th fret. When you get to 24th fret, that is the same as the nut, which is all open and the 12th fret and the 24th fret is the same, it's just all barred across, these notes are all allowed in the diatonic scale, so you have then covered the fretboard from one end to the other. What you guys now have to do, which I will probably show you in a couple of weeks or so, is how to piece together an improvisation over a riff that is compatible with the diatonic scale. So basically if you make up a chord sequence, and all those notes are in the diatonic scale or riff and all those notes are in the diatonic scale then you will be able to use all these notes that i have taught you from the nut right up to the 24th fret you'll be you'll be able to use those to solo play leads play melodies over as long as you are using the diatonic scale notes within the riff as well. So I hope this bit of music theory, this bit of guitar theory, should I say, really helps you guys. I've tried to do it as quick as I could. I've tried to cram it all into one video. Like I said, I've cut it short by not showing you the Fijerian and the Dorian um, modes. But if you do want to learn them, they'll be on a diagram of the diatonic scale, which will appear on your screen right now. I'm going to leave that on your screen as I am talking for the end of the video because I want you to look at it, get your eyes on it, see and visualize all those modes that you have learned. There are five modes that get you up to the 12th fret. As you can see, the notes on the nut are the same as the 12th fret. And then Lydian and Mixolydian that we learned right at the beginning, they just continue on and so do the rest of the modes and they go all the way up to the 24th fret. They repeat themselves the pattern and you have then learned all the notes that you need to move around on the fretboard providing that your chords or your riffs that you are soloing or improvising over use notes within that same scale thanks very much for watching i hope this helped you so much like i said it's a long video i tried to make it as uncomplicated as I could. I tried to spend a lot of time describing exactly what I am doing and the theory behind it without boggling your minds too much with music theory. But I hope this helped. It's a quick way of learning and in my opinion, everybody who sits down, goes to a guitar lesson, starts learning guitar, should learn this first and then everything else will be so much easier. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to see more lessons on my channel like this, more tutorials, please, please comment below. If you have any questions to ask about this video, things that were unclear that I didn't describe well enough, then please ask me in the comments below and I will try and get back to you. Thank you very much. Subscribe, click the bell, and I'll see you all soon with some cool guitar demos.